What is going on you guys? It's your girl Diana, back at you with another YouTube video. Today's video will be more serious in nature as I will be covering the disqualification of the four finalists for the Korea National VGC Finals. So let's go ahead and hop into the video. Bye. Bye. This entire situation actually stems from the Global Challenge 3, which if you recall was one of the worldwide tournaments that anybody could participate in globally. However, these online competitions were being used by Japan and South Korea to determine their entry to the national championships. And if you recall, the Global Challenge 3 was actually full of glitches, with players being unable to stop battling. Essentially, they would enter the tournament and do one battle and were unable to leave the battle queue. So they would just continuously have to battle over and over and over again, instead of being able to exit the battle and do another battle at whatever time they please within the allotted tournament time, of course. In addition, some players were also unable to see what their rank was during the tournament, and some players were forced to battle the same opponent multiple times. So clearly there was some pretty large issues, especially considering that Japan and South Korea were using these as qualifying matches to get invites to an actual final championship. With Game Freak and the Pokemon Company having to come out with the version 1.3.1 patch in order to fix these glitches and have a rerun of this tournament for Japan and South Korea. However, the Pokemon company over in Korea that takes care of their tournaments decided to take a completely different route than they did over in Japan. And instead of me trying to piece together what exactly happened, I'm actually going to read off what Nash, which is a very prominent Korean player, tweeted out as an explanation for what exactly happened to get him and three other finalists banned from the actual championships. So according to Nash, he said, hello, this is Nash. I've been asked a lot what's been happening in Korea and how we ended up locking in metronome in the national finals, only to be disqualified for doing so. I am writing this down to explain to those interested. So I'm not sure if you've been catching up with the issues all around the Asian circuit, but like other Asian regions, Korea has been having a rather suffering year. Here are some major events that happened in sequential order. So he's basically going to go through all of the events that added up to these four participants protesting and locking in metronome only teams, thus leading to their disqualification. So starting off at number zero, before we go in, a little bit of background in the Korean VGC format. Before COVID, we used to have three different in real life events that led up to the finals in which each gave out CP, which are the championship points. This circuit point is exclusive in Korea as we have an independent circuit as Japan does, which is a key thing to remember. So the tournaments that we have here in the United States are run by the Pokemon Company International. However, Korea has their own branch of the Pokemon company that runs their tournaments. So their tournaments are very different than what we have here in the US. The last in real life event that we had was back in 2019 and the South Korean VGC community has never seen one since. They only gave one online double elimination tour, the Trainers Cup each year and that was it. But let's continue on with the explanation. So number one, last year Worlds was back. Players were curious as to how Pokemon Korea plans to give invites. No explanations were made and they proceeded with the Trainers Cup, the online tour, like before. After the tour, they suddenly announced that the top four of the Trainers Cup would be invited to day two at Worlds. This was excluding the juniors and seniors since the tour was only eligible for masters, which that is another big reason why they decided to protest as the juniors and seniors division was completely ignored and overlooked and the masters division, which is the oldest age division was prioritized. Number two, this year they again announced nothing until March. In March, they announced that our circuit will be written as here. And they actually have a little hyperlink to the entire thing, but he kind of goes on to summarize it. Basically, they gave invites to Trainers Cups for top 50 Korean players of each global challenge. And then the 150 players competed in the best of one ladder tour. Top four gets day two, top 16 gets day one. So basically, if you made top four in the best of one online competitions, then you were invited to battle in day two of the finals. So you were basically guaranteed to go to day two. However, if you made top 16, you were guaranteed to go to day one and you'd have to battle through day one and then see if you made it to day two. But people were very frustrated that that we are deciding everything in just 10 games of ladder. Also, this format is vulnerable to sub accounts and match manipulation. And then just like Japan, we had multiple issues, which is going back to those global challenge three issues that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. People were getting rematch after rematch and could not stop playing during the tour. 
Pokemon Korea decided that this tour is invalid and that top 16 from this tour will be unqualified. They basically decided that nobody was qualified and they had to redo the entire tournament from scratch. People who went to top 16 here demanded compensation and Pokemon Korea decided to give them an invite to the next year's Trainers Cup. This is basically just nothing since reaching Trainers Cup was just getting 1600 in the global challenge. Nothing even close to top cutting it. This was a devastating message implying our format will remain this way next year. Which is another big point that they were making as well is that it was basically confirmed that they were not planning on changing the format for these tournaments anytime soon. Which obviously compared to what we have here in the US this seems like a very unfair format to have. Two weeks later, we played the ladder tour again with the updated data, which fixed the previous anomalies, which was the second run of the Global Challenge 3 after they did the version 1.3.1 update. Number three, Blue, Sayun, Mi, and Mija were the top four of the second ladder tour, which meant we were secured day two invites. But in order to do that, we had to show up at the Trainers Cup final round a streamed match. It's just a final round that decides first to fourth with some nice prizes, but we've already locked in day two, so not much was at stake. The four decided to go on metronome battle to protest against these issues within our community, which the issues that they were protesting specifically were no in real life events, constant problems in the tour system, disregarding younger divisions, and absurd compensations for the problems that they caused. But the real problem behind all of this is that they show absolute disrespect to our players, which honestly, good for them for standing up because I feel like they're standing up to a very large entity and that deserves props. Number four, during this week, Pokemon Korea suddenly sends an email to Blue disqualifying him without telling him why. So this player Blue got eliminated with basically no explanation. He just got an email saying, hey, sorry, you are no longer able to participate in this tournament and refused to tell him why, which there's definitely some rumors as to why he got disqualified. However, I'm not gonna mention them because he literally got no answer. So we truthfully have no information as to why he actually got disqualified in the first place. But they immediately gave his day two to Bitago and Bitago agreed with the three of us. So metronome battle was to proceed. So this new entry basically agreed to protest with them and just did the exact same thing and locked in a metronome team like the remaining three players did. We had to lock in in an in-game online tour system beforehand. So we did that yesterday, June 2nd, and we were supposed to battle on the 4th, which is today. Number five, today, the third, all four players were sent an email along with the notice on the official website and the Pokemon Korea Twitter account informing us that all four of us were disqualified. And the reasoning behind it is that we all locked in Pokemon that learn one specific move. So their reasoning for banning them supposedly was because they all locked in metronome. And according to Pokemon Korea, this falls into prohibited acts written below. One, an act causing harm to other participants or giving an offensive image, which I'm sure they're probably a company that cares a lot about their public image. So they didn't want a protest to happen live on stream. And number two, other actions that Nintendo and the Pokemon company deem inappropriate, which I'm sure that's probably what they were going for more so than the offensive image, is that they felt that this protest was inappropriate because realistically, what is a metronome finals gonna do, especially since they were already guaranteed to go to day two? This was kind of just like a big showcase so that they could see some battles online. Since like he mentioned earlier in his little explanation, they were all already going to day two of the finals. So this entire thing was more of like an exhibition, which is why they really didn't have anything to lose. So they were like, let's just do metronome to protest. Pokemon Korea saw our teams and didn't like it and therefore disqualified all four of us for playing metronome. And this ultimately led to them canceling the final round for the master's division final. So they're just completely not having a final for the master's division anymore. Anymore. And as of right now, they are sticking to their decision and they don't really plan on any further explanation since we haven't had any updates since these tweets came out yesterday. However, it's also really nice to see that there are some of the US VGC players that went to Milwaukee this weekend, showing their support by doing the exact same thing and locking in metronome teams, which of course many people praised him for doing so and standing in solidarity with those four players that did lock in metronome over in Korea. But as I mentioned, as of today, June 4th, which was supposed to be the date of the actual finals matches, we do not have any further information from the Pokemon Company Korea or from the four players that were disqualified. 
I do have to commend those four players, like I mentioned earlier, for standing up to an entity as large as the Pokemon Company. I'm sure that was not an easy feat, and I can only hope that things may improve from here. But that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys found this video informational, and if you did, I kindly suggest that you consider subscribing so that I can continue to make content for you guys. And if you are already subscribed and you would like another way to support the channel, feel free to check out the merch store. There is a link down below in the description that takes you to not only my merch store, but also all of my other socials, so you can keep up with what I'm doing on a daily basis. But thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you to those of you who have joined the channel as members. I appreciate you all so much. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.